Bats and flying foxes are incredible pollinators. They fly long distances, visiting our eucalypt forests and are crucial to the health of our ecosystems. Bats are actually an incredibly diverse group. We've got micro bats that are about the size of a mouse with wings, all the way up to the fruit bats, which have a wingspan of over a metre. Even though we sometimes see them in large groups, their populations across their distribution range is actually declining. Welcome to EnviroTube. Today, we're going to get up close and personal with bats. Bats are placental mammals, and flying foxes give birth to live young in November. Those young are dependent on their mothers for milk for up to five months, and for the first few months, they fly around on the mother's belly. At some stage, they get too big to fly around, and the parents will actually leave them in little congregations within the camps, known as creches. These highly social animals spend days in camps like this chatting to each other and humans are able to hear them. Whereas microbats, which use echolocation, make a whole range of sound that humans aren't able to hear. While smaller microbats use echolocation to navigate, they still have eyes, but flying foxes like this have exceptional eyesight. Like all wildlife, bats can carry diseases and there's two diseases in particular that can be very harmful to people. Australian bat lysovirus is a virus that's related to rabies. The way that it's transmitted is through the bat's saliva, and unless you're having very close contact with bats, there's nothing that you need to be afraid of. And Hendra virus is a virus that impacts horses, and through horses can also have a devastating effect on the vets that treat them. If a bat is injured, you should always call a wildlife professional to come and handle it and not touch the bat. People who do handle them have been immunised against this sort of virus. Animals that live in our urban environment are faced with a whole range of unique threats. And there's a community of people and organisations set up who look after those animals when they do get in a bit of trouble. Today we're going to meet with Sarah, who looks after a group of animals that most people don't get a good chance to have a look at. Climate change and heat events, that's one yep. of the big threats. Yes, but absolutely. why else would bats come into your care? The majority of bats that I get into care would be from um, large aperture backyard fruit tree netting. So ones right. with quite large holes in it. How old are these guys? She's seven weeks and she is, she was premature and so she's plus four weeks. So was she born in care? Yep. Her mum was on barbed wire um, and had an untreatable palate fracture. So the roof of her mouth was completely shredded from biting on the barb. I was taking her to the vet to be euthanised, um, but she went into early labour on the way to the vet and I thought she wouldn't be... Viable. Yeah, I th just like human, human premies, they have complications. But with consultation with the vet and lots of sleepless nights and hard work, she's pulled through. And so this is Blob, she was just a blob. Now she's a proper bat. These are just gorgeous little creatures and I bet there's a lot of people who are thinking, how do I get involved with bats? Is, can people get involved with care? Absolutely. In order to be able to do what I do, you need a two-day workshop with Sydney Wildlife. Um, from there, you need to become vaccinated against rabies, and that involves three injections. Once we've got that, then you can do a specialist course, which is another two-day course. Then you're good you're to... Care. Yeah, less than 1% of the wild population can carry a rabies-related... Oh, she's having a, a flap. Um, ...related virus. There's not really any way for people to be bitten by a bat unless they're handling a bat. There's no risk if you ever come into contact with urine or faeces. Um, it's, it's, it's just, just through, through a bite or a bite. scratch. And so that's a content little bat. That is a content little bat. And what is he eating there? Or she? So she's on milk at the moment. In the wild, she would be attached to mum and suckling yep. most of the time. What sort of milk? Is it? It's a goat's based milk, which we find is, is good if we add supplements to make it up. How often are they feeding? This one's still on five milk feeds and this one's now on four milk feeds a day. And she's starting to be introduced to her native food source, native gum blossom and other hardwood species. Do they think that you're the mama bat or are they just accepting so. you as a carer? 
They depend on forming a bond with their foster parent. In the wild, they have such an intense relationship with their mum. Flying foxes only give birth to a single young. If you think about humans who take about nine months to, yep. to grow and these tiny little things take six months, mm, um, you start getting an idea of just how complex they are. Thanks for watching EnviroTube.